this is Thomas Pop here from Video Mantis with another Mantis discussion. I have a good friend with me today, Jared Elkin from Wave Report. How are you doing, sir? I'm fantastic. I want to say thank you for doing this. I know that you have a busy schedule today. You're not from L.A. anymore. No, I I used to live here. I used to work here, and then I, with my wife, we moved back to Minnesota, where we both we have family there. We uh, went to high school and college there, et cetera, and we like. We like the changing of the seasons, I'll say. Awesome. Abs yeah, absolutely. It's it's very interesting. You either like the heat and the steadiness, or you like the changes, which is always nice, too. I'm from Michigan originally, so uh, oh, yeah, I definitely I grew that. up with the seasons and everything. And then, you know, went to Pittsburgh, Florida, had one hurricane. Gosh, <laughs> I am so sorry, everyone that had to go through yeah. Dorian. I, I, I feel for you. I went through Hurricane Charlie, and I was like, I'm out. I'm, I'm ready yeah. for some earthquakes, I guess. Yeah. You know, I never, I never really experienced an earthquake when I was here. I, you know, it, it was unfortunate that the whole time I lived here was basically just the length of the drought. Yeah. So <laughs> my exposure to LA is mostly half dead trees. <laughs> um, so, but it's, it's been looking a lot more lush since every time I, I visit. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, why don't you tell me a little bit more about yourself? Like we said, uh, you're, you're established in Minnesota now, but mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about yourself, where you're from and how you got into sound. Well, uh, you know, I'm from all over. I, you know, I used to live in the East Coast. I was born in Rhode Island, lived in Massachusetts for a while. I lived in Minnesota for a while growing up. I mean, I went to film school. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in film. And when I was in school, <laughs> they emphasized a lot of learning on everything but sound, ironically. Uh, I kind of liked it. There was a sound mixer who came in. He showed us uh, how to do basic audio, more than just booming into a camera straight yeah. into some camcorder. Like, I think it was an HVX that we had, which is a glorious. Good old HVX Or DVXs and yep. stuff like that, you know, on the on the tapes and P2 cards. I saw just saw somebody with P2 cards still. Like, every, I'm still shocked every time I wow. see a camera. Like, some Panas people with Panasonic, it was something for CNBC, I think. They had... Uh, they had P2 cards, and I was like, They are Whoa. milking those cameras. I know. They are absolutely milking those cameras. But um, but the sound mixer came in. He had a Went X3, the old, the, those old uh, three-channel mixers. And he liked it, and he was trying to show us how to basically do it because the school had a slew of them going to some two-channel Tascam recorder. Um, I think it was a – no. It wasn't a Tascam. Yeah, I think it was a Tascam or something. Uh, and – Nobody listened. Nobody cared. They were just interested in shooting video or directing and writing and producing, and nobody really cared about the sound. And I was like, this is interesting. I'm going to listen to this guy. And then, you know, we all had to crew on each other's movies, and I just – I was the only one who demonstrated any interest or aptitude for it, so they all asked me to do sound. Wow. So I got some experience doing that. I mean, granted on that type of gear um, – but uh, I was going to say a horrible joke. <laughs> when you use that last, the went mixer, when did you use it last? I told you it was horrible. It's when, not, when did you? When oh, when I went see. Uh, 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 yeah, actually, I, probably the last time I used it was right before the 633 came out. Cause oh, I yeah? got it at launch. That was my first like big boy device. The big boy. Well, you know, and uh, before then, what I did, you know, before I left school, I figured, okay. I'm going to, I like sound. I'm going to do sound, you know. Loki, <laughs> <laughs> my dog's out here. I should put a lav on him. Go on, Loki. That'd be fun, actually. Yep. Um, give me a second here. Keep talking. I'm going to get rid of my dog because he's going to keep barking. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, uh, essentially, uh, you know, I bought some used gear before I left, uh, I left school. And, I, you know, I, I had such a limited understanding and I was trying to learn as I went. Um, and uh, I, I got two went mixtures. I got a went X5, that five channel one. And the thing is it didn't have direct outs. It only had mix outs. It had a like a tape out and a master left and right. And I needed four individual channels, so I also got an X three. So going to some Tascam DR six eighty. It was a monstrous huge setup with an X five and X three in that Tascam recorder just so I could get four discrete channels. I remember that being back breakingly heavy and it was crazy and the limiters on went mixtures are just garbage. It was ridiculous. So I always recorded I always sent everything in cold and it was just a it was really a it's you know, it's it's like your first car. Exactly. It's a, it's a, it was a beater. It was you know, <laughs> you know, it was a junker. And then I got a six three three when it came out and that was kinda like, Oh my god, it, it records, it mixes. I mean yeah. that was like the frontier getting something that 
an all-in-one device. So that was pretty exciting. For sure. That's where I sort of came up from. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. So how did you get into, because it's very interesting, you're kind of a hybrid sound mixer. Yes, you you have your, you know, your business and you, you work in sound, but you also do another side of things. You have your own website called Wave Report, mm-hmm. which is kind of like Video Mantis. You deal with education and spreading awareness of good sound practices. What can you tell us about Wave Report, how it got started, a little bit more about that? So it was actually started by a man named Andrew Jones, who okay. he now... He now uh, has left to run Deity Microphones when they first started out, which is pretty exciting. I really love all the things he's been doing to, like, explode Shout out to that. Andrew. He's shout out, killing shout it. Shout out to Andrew because he really killing is it. killing it. It's amazing. They just introduced the a new uh, plug-on transmitter. Yeah, in, and in fact, we're going to talk a lot about that. We're going to si- segue that in a minute because this is going to be a special IBC episode today. We're going to be talking about a lot of the stuff that's going to be happening in the up and coming weekend in Amsterdam. If you guys are going to IBC or if you haven't, this is us going to speculate a little bit on some of the gear. I know that we usually do it on Vault Talks, but we thought we might talk a little bit more about festivals in general, how to you know basically maximize your time. I've gone to NAB, I believe, 16 years. I only missed one. I think I get a set of steak knives this year for how many <laughs> I've done. And I know that you've done quite a few as well. Mm-hmm. So we have a couple ideas of don't eat the veal, uh, of of what you can do to make sure that you stay productive and and have a great time at these trade shows. Yeah. And then we'll go into all of the gear. Some of them we'll be able to talk about. Some I can't talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll go from there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Andrew Jones, he left to do that. And at the time, uh, I think one point I, I went up to the Ar- near the Arctic Circle for a documentary. And... Uh, I oh you know this is before that I, I was trying to mod my G2 and G3 like send other G3s to have SMA antennas that's right and I was trying to use Andrew's tutorial that he had in Wave Report of how to do it and I messed it up badly because oh, no. I just didn't under, it was all learning things sometimes learning by doing yep and so I was talking to him about my troubleshooting to the point and he said why don't you write this up and uh, so I wrote on Wave Report how to mess up a mod and I thought that was really helpful because (laughs) you know people watch these tutorials they look at this and just because it seems really clear to the people who know how to do it even making it as clear as you possibly can to somebody who's never done these things before it can be daunting and even though modding for an SMA antenna on these types of transmitters and receivers is actually really really simple relatively yeah Yeah, this isn't like taking apart a MacBook Pro with 800 screws there's a couple screws chassis yeah you know you have to understand soldering you have to understand lengthening but but overall you know it's easy for us but it's not always easy for the person who's never done it before and even just a confidence level so perspective i wanted to write this from a perspective of you know this is how you can mess it up and this is how you can fix it once you've messed it up these are common mistakes when trying to do something like this and it was great and then afterwards i when i was up in the arctic circle i wrote a write-up on how all my gear survived in negative 40 fahrenheit oh yeah (laughs) yeah sneak uh you know just a quick summary red cameras miserable failure oh, no. drones the gear the oil in the gears froze and they just oh, fell out of the sky are you kidding me 633 <laughs> solid electro wireless solid sennheiser like g series for camera hops couldn't even get half a foot of range oh no yeah but you know there there you see like the build well, quality of these types of things. yeah that's true so you know i wrote something about that and then i just started writing more for it and then um he left to go to deity and i sort of took over a wave report when he was now that he's gone to something else. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's great. So, so what's it like being the boss then? I mean, like, what? Tell me what a a, a day in the life of someone that runs a website is for somebody that doesn't know. Like this, it's hard <laughs> to run a website. Well, you know, it uh, particularly Wave Report is. Uh, it's a little different than Video Mantis in the sense that it's it's not necessarily a, a to- an everyday thing. A lot of it is moderating what other writers might be putting up to make sure it matches with the standards of what the website is checking the comments deciding whether to uh, like because anybody can try and comment anything on any type of website and everyone anyone who knows uh who owns a website or runs a website with a comment section understands that you have to really vet some of those comments before they go in not yeah. because you don't want something that if someone's criticizing that's fine but sometimes people say hateful or yeah or they act like trolls or etc so you have to check that or respond to those types of things a lot of times People ask for clarification in 
uh, a review or a guide or a tutorial or things like that and right. responding to those things a lot of times people will send me you know because we have their contact information i'll let them email the you know the wave report email address to ask questions about these things to have a private discussion maybe they feel worried that they look stupid asking a question on the the forum comments because it seems too basic or something or maybe it's really complicated and it requires a more detailed back and forth so things like that yeah actually you know that's kind of interesting you know to to talk about social media for a moment social media is such a volatile thing you know and and people tend to get tempers flared and i feel that like generally people online they don't have a very good perspective i think that when you start using these iphones these me 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 devices that something kind of rewires in your brain but besides all that i really like the approach that you take you it seems like online you have a really good way of playing devil's advocate without rising tensions and i don't know how you do it to be honest because like i'm usually getting smacked in the background by my wife going you idiot you did it again you <laughs> you started another fire now you need to put it out or i'll put it out for you and it's just like oh gosh you know so how do you do it well you know that's what i was going to say whenever i see you write something you're usually uh usually try and approach things from the middling perspective with it. I try. Is, you, you know, it, it's like the seventh revision. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, and, and, and that's it's great. You can revise comments on there. Yeah. I, all I'll say is, is that it, people get really territorial about their way of doing things, especially when you've got something like audio where every, I mean, every mixer's bag is a custom setup. Totally. You know, you can, I mean, it's, it's hard. I mean, it's it all take opinion. You, it's all opinion and it's all what you prefer. When you're up at a certain echelon of gear you know like y y it's all really good stuff <laughs> i mean yeah. it's all great they are all great tools and they all work extremely well it's just about what do you need how you want to use it and a lot of people just they denigrate each other or they're approaching this from a this is bad this is good you know this is the only way acceptable way of doing things yeah and then so other people are you know wonderful they're they're the same type of approach where you know, there's a difference between people not doing their homework and asking on these pro forums just to have everybody spoon feed the information. But then there's the uh, the other side of that where they're really it, there's a lot of people that want to share experience to other professionals who are actually professionals and not, you know, just looking to say, how do I you know, how do I push record on this? Right. You know, but how how did you overcome a problem? How did you troubleshoot? A way of doing things how did you i don't know just insulate well exactly your bag yeah. from rfi i mean you i know, don't want to sound like that old guy that's like well back in my day we read books and tried to find the answers ourselves yeah but it, it kind of is that it says you know i think there's 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 a point to being a professional that says i'm not just gonna like you said let people spoon feed this information to me i'm literally going to take the time to research it why because i am a professional and i want to fully understand it i don't want the cliff notes you know, professionals don't get the cliff notes. They fully understand the trade to the best of its ability. And when it adapts, they learn that too. And when something new branches out, like, for example, the audio for VR workshop and all of the different things that are going on with that, we're going to learn all those new things and spread that information. So, yeah, it's, it's just it's a big, important thing that we have to do. Yeah. And, you know, there's it's just it's the, the whole philosophy of uh you know, wave report from everything I absorbed even when I first came in was that there are a lot of ways to do things. And just because you're not approaching something always from the most expensive standpoint <laughs> does not mean that you can't get it done. In fact, everybody when looking at gear should really look at what they need. And probably, I mean, I guess it depends on how much disposable income you have, but uh, just because it's the newest, biggest, brightest does not mean that you have any need for it or use for it. I mean, it's everyone to each their own, but it's important for people to to be informed and to get the information about what they need to do their jobs and, you know, how they can do it best with whatever tools they have available. It doesn't yeah. mean, you know, and some people will cry, oh, it's a race to the bottom. You just want to, you know, people just want to play up non-professional gear because anytime something isn't the top tier there's a, you know there's some people that are never inevitably going to scream oh it's consumer level 
And, yeah. And yeah, there yeah, really yeah. is there really is a middle there prosumer is it's not a joke. There is a prosumer level. Sure, and, of course. And pros can get can get by with prosumer gear sometimes just like consumers might need prosumer level gear to do some higher level consumer type thing. I you know, what my point is it these classifications they're just made by people that want to decide how good or not good something is. And you know, when you take the you know, the sound devices mixed pre series, that's an interesting discussion because they sound so incredibly good and technically their preamps are cleaner than the sound devices six series and they've been exploding because they're so inexpensive relatively i mean they'll work for certain things yeah they're you know they have their shortcomings they have their benefits it's important to learn why it is that you need it why you don't need it you know like there's a lot of things without going into too much detail well it's like what sarah glazer said she said it's not the tool it's the fool (laughs) <laughs> and I yeah. love it because it's it's true. It's about, it, you know, it doesn't, the 32-bit floating point or any of the other features, it doesn't matter if you don't understand the practical application of sound and, and y- you know, you, you, you follow those theories. So it's it's about the fool first. You know, you got to understand the buttons before you hit them. You got to understand the mic placement and all those other things first. Yeah, and, you know, a, a great deal of the advancements in audio have mostly been convenience-based because yes. our capability, re- you know, it, it's not, I don't want to say plateaued out, but it reached a certain point where you can get things done with less, it's just, is this going to make my life easier, which is a, a legitimate, yeah, exactly. a legitimate concern yeah. as well. It's just, you know, it, a lot of people think, well, I'm not going to be able to survive unless I have the new thing. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, it's that FOMO, true. that fear of missing out is definitely a big thing. Yeah. I, I feel that there are two different types of sound mixers in that scenario. There are the people that are like, yes, I have to get the piece of gear brand new right away because e- A, either, you know, the FOMO, the fear of missing out, or B, even the fact that they say, well, it makes me more employable because I'm always on the top of my game. I have the best equipment. So then what they're doing is they're playing that game of anytime I buy a new piece of gear, I know that something's new coming out, so I'm going to sell the old stuff before. And so they're always playing that depreciation value of their gear. And then there are the other mixers that really fine tune their package and make the educated decisions. They don't just jump and buy everything. And then, you know, they they really focus on the skill and the trade and learning all of the techniques of how to use their specific package perfectly. And they're literally that those two approaches can work depending on your situation. Exactly. You know, it's what I was saying before. I think I mentioned it before is know your client base and know what they care about. Yeah. You know, if a lot of, you know, like, for example, my clients, most of them, they don't care they really don't care what I use as long as it's done well. Yeah. You know, and then other ones, they say, I need flash. I want to see a giant cart that looks like, you yeah, know, Yeah, we're bringing station, in 20 you know. agency yeah, and you, you know, need to look good. And, and it really, it, that's a, it really does depend on the needs. You know, it, you could take, you know, you can take systems from a long time ago and they'll still do beautifully because they don't, they don't get turned over in quality like a camera does constantly. You know, so it really comes down to before you make the decision about which one you want to be or where in between those two you want to be, learn your client base, learn what, because, and it is constantly changing, but in theory, it's probably not going to change so fast that you can't make adjustments along the way. But that's why we also have to like really focus on our clients, you know, like the people that are only focusing on the gear. I can't believe they did that to me. They came out with this piece of gear and it doesn't have that feature that I thought I, or I think that I need Mm -hmm. whatever the feature is. It's like, what does your client need? Like, you know, focus on your client and their needs and focus on how you can improve their experience of you and then it doesn't matter, you know what I mean? So, yes, you're going to get specific pieces of gear depending on what your clients need, but mm-hmm. focus on that. Don't focus so much on the technical. Focus on the experience and improving the relationship. That's exactly. one of the things that I've been starting to do recently, and it's truly been helping my game more, you know. It's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So, before we get into talking about IBC, I wanted to let you guys know, and in fact, I'm going to flip over here just to make sure I get all the words right. We have a new workshop at Video Mantis that's coming out this month, September 21st and 22nd. It's called Audio for VR. It's a spatial audio workshop with Ben Adams, our newest mentor. 
and we are going to be learning from the pros how to record and mix spatial audio for virtual reality productions. The weekend course will have lectures, hands-on uh, information with ambisonic and binaural microphones. We are going to have spatial audio workflows and demonstrations, as well as special guest speakers. Don't miss the opportunity to learn how these exciting new applications from some of the top creators in spatial audio do their thing. There is a little more than half of the tickets left for the event. We've actually had a few tickets that are already sold, so please check out the link that's going to be put in the comments of this video so you can come to the event. Video Mantis is going to be there and we are going to be filming it, but you definitely need to be at this event to make sure that you get all the information because the way that the event is set up there are some of the hands-on demonstrations that I'm not going to be able to record in a workshop scenario that would totally play correctly online so we're going to film this two-day event to the best of our abilities but if you really want to make sure that you get in on all of the information make sure that you purchase a ticket to this event and come you're gonna meet all of the industry professionals and really show your motive and say you know what I want to get into this industry I want to get into this niche you're gonna be in the room with all the people that you're gonna need to know so check it out on our website and sign up now so check that out yeah. awesome so let's start talking about IBC and a little bit more about trade shows in general. Obviously, NAB is the one that's in Vegas in April. IBC is uh, coming up. I believe it's 21st and 22nd as well. Is that right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's the same weekend as this Audio for VR workshop. And, man... The trade shows are a completely different animal. There's usually, like, what, 200,000 people walking around, bumping elbows everywhere. What's your experience? Uh, my experience, and I think it should be everyone's experience, carry your hand sanitizer. Oh, and yes. I think that's just... I get <laughs> deathly sick <laughs> every does. single NAB. Like, you get home and you're like, what, what, what's happening? I'm turning blue. Didn't you, you... You had a bunch of hand sanitizer this last... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I've were, literally you, gotten, you like, mortified. pneumonia. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I have... It has been so bad. Like, I come home and, like, I have, like, a breathing tube. You know, it's just... You just don't want to mess around. Like, and... There's just so many people that are, I hate to say it, using the bathrooms and not washing their hands and everything. So, you know what? You're shaking so many people's hands. People are picking up things and touching them and then yeah. putting it back down 100,000 times a minute. Um, yeah, it's just good to protect yourself. Washing your hands multiple times. Hand sanitizer is a very mm -hmm. good thing. Having your own water bottles that you throw away. Um, what about, what else? What do you think? Uh, I guess prepare for information overload if you if you come to really absorb things because mm -hmm. there's a lot of information and all the manufacturers are going to have a big long spiel about everything especially you know in most trade shows they're debuting something new usually there's something new at the companies i mean it depends like big you know like big 10 you know big 10 companies are going to have something like for sure moderately new you know and this ibc there's some new stuff came out there's surprise 833 like sound devices 833 yeah. announced yesterday for shipping monday which is crazy Pretty fun. fast not having like that's fastest yeah nobody I've thought that they were going to come out with the mix pre-series 2 and then go oh and by the way we have this other guy too yeah you know so and that's pretty fun yeah it's that's that was shocking because nobody like they really did a sneak attack there so people at ibc will be able to come take a look at the sound devices 833 and and a whole bunch of other things like that and there's going to be a whole lot of information to absorb and there's going to be a whole lot of standing all day without sitting down and there's going to be a whole lot of forgetting to drink water mm -hmm. and you know it's it's you're sitting there, you're moving from place to place in an, in an interior environment where you're not seeing the sun all day. It, it's like it, and you're just talking. talking yeah, like talking. it gets it gets surreal because you you talk in so long, you move so much, but you don't even realize how much of it is because it's just a big crowded event without seeing the sun move in the exactly. sky. And it is, uh, if you're not careful, you can really wear yourself out at those. Uh, yeah, but it. But I think they're a blast. I love. I mean, I love going to NAB in Las Vegas. NAB is crazy. Year. It is a crazy place. Uh, I really appreciate that a lot of the a lot of the vendors have plushy carpet in oh, their yeah. booths, so when you yep. stand on it, it doesn't hurt as bad. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, but it is uh, as long as you're, you know, prepped bodily for that. Uh, there's a lot of amazing, exciting things. It gets so exciting until you realize, oh, I can't buy every single thing I just saw. Yeah. Huh. No, I think the greatest thing is just when you when you go to NAB, 
Try not to focus. It sounds funny, but or, I'm sorry, and not even NAB, IBC at this time. I mm-hmm. apologize because yeah, IBC. IBC is the yeah. one that's coming up. Uh, so if you're going to IBC, one of the things that I recommend that you do is try not – it sounds funny because it's a tech show. Try not to focus so much on the gear. Try to focus on the relationships that you can build from the companies because as as a person that's been going to all of these trade shows for many years, being able to go and just say hi to Tentacle, say hi to Electro and be like, Thomas, what's up? How you doing? Mm-hmm. Is is just a great feeling. So And it's just always fun. That's what makes it more fun, in my opinion, is the relationships because, you know, all these manufacturers, they live all over the world and you don't get to see them all the time. Sometimes it's just an email. You know, you get a little icon picture that's 150 pixels wide and that's all you get to ever see of your friends and then you get to go to these trade shows and you get to give them a hug and say hi and see what's new with them and and see their kids growing up and it's just a great experience besides the gear Mm -hmm. and not only the relationship with all of the manufacturers the relationship of everybody next to you i cannot tell you how many jobs i've gotten from working at nab where i'm just talking to random people and they're like man thomas was really cool and then i'm driving back home to la and i get a phone call for a job because they're like you know what i really like just vibing with you i want to give you a call for a job so it's an opportunity to learn it's an opportunity to network with manufacturers it's an opportunity to network with other people to get work exactly it's it's a whole smorgasbord of thing and it's always a place to party and have a good time you know it is and you know the so those things you mentioned absolutely yeah. in addition you know there's also the 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 side of it that the manufacturers want they want to talk to the users so there's like a there's a mutual a symbiotic relationship in yeah. these trade shows where it's an opportunity for them to get masses amount of feedback from their users about what's new, what are they liking that they're seeing, what are they not liking that they're seeing, and it's also uh, an opportunity for the user to say why did you build it like this, what what are your thoughts on this, what was the thinking behind this, and have the actual manufacturers, which a lot of people in most places of the whole world don't get to actually talk to the designers in person. They get to go say, get an on-site tutorial to show them how are you going to do this, how would you set this up, what is your intention, there's a, a yeah. A you really made good, it. Show it to yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. And you know, and you're able to give feedback. They're able to tell you all that, and you walk away with a greater understanding. And even even when you don't own that thing, that piece of gear, you might later, or it, you might rent it, or you might be called upon to use it, or it just might help you understand whether you're going to need it. Just to understand yeah. the architecture, understand where the industry's going, what are, where's the tech going, because I firmly believe that we should all be read up at least moderately well on as much as we possibly can absolutely because you're going to be a better uh better at your craft at your skill yeah if you can handle more than just what you have in your hands absolutely you you can you can conceptualize it you can say well this works in that way yeah you don't want to be the guy that says oh i don't work with that sorry i can't exactly but you can also you can also you know understand interfacing better you can understand how these things cooperate with others let's just say you're on you're on a shoot with another person who's doing this and you can understand how and they have that gear you have your gear and you could figure out how they're going to work together right. how they're going to complement each other where they may clash always be learning always, always be, be learning. learning yeah you when you go to school for this or if you go to school for this regardless of what people's opinions are of uh, of yes you should go to film school no you shouldn't it's a waste of time whatever we all have opinions i have mine i'm not sharing it today um but the idea is that when you leave that that school you still have to learn every single day because the world progresses it's always going around the sun and there are other people that are learning just as hard of you um i work a lot with ufc and mma fighters and one of the things that they always say is they say i'm going to train as hard as i have to because i know that that other dude is training just as hard enough to beat me And it's like, whoa, okay, that's a really scary thing. But now you have to think about it of, well, there's, I don't know, what, 150,000 sound mixers in the world, maybe 200,000. And, you know, if you think of it in the scheme of things, well, that's your competition. So you need to find a way to, to put yourself, maybe not necessarily above, but distance yourself so people, so you stand out from the crowd, Mm -hmm. you know? That absolutely makes sense. And it's all... It is all in combination, learning learning everything, including beyond what you need to do everything right then. You know, it's you're always a student because it's you never know where that information is going to be helpful. 
good relationship with manufacturers translates to good relationships with everything. I mean, they'll they'll help you out. You'll help them out. Yep. And like you said, networking at these trade shows is incredibly helpful. I know it's definitely been helpful for me. Even just, I, I mean, things could be helpful down the line in ways you don't even know. You can help someone else. They can help you. And, you know, the, I, I think there's a, there is a, a good camaraderie between a lot of people where people are competing, but they can also band together in that there there is enough to go around it's just a matter of spreading around to people yes. who want to excel properly and you know who want to actually work hard on their craft and to have good relationships exactly so it's um it's it's these trade shows are a fantastic thing i wish i wish i was at all of them i love going yeah to i've never been to ibc i would love to go i yeah i've never been either i'd love to go yeah so everybody you're gonna if anybody's there you know on the day please let us know what's going on um, let's see, what are other things really good for trade shows? You need a really good pair of shoes or mm -hmm. Dr. Scholl's inserts. Yeah. You're going to walk probably five to 10 miles, like literally. Um, you need cough drops. You need tea. You don't drink sodas on these days because you're going to be talking to people and you're just going to like burn out on your energy. You want like a ton of water. You want things that are going to soothe your throat. Because, like, yeah, like we said, it's just a ton of talking, a ton of laughing, especially in Vegas. It's very dry. I don't know if the IBC Festival is in a dry area. I'm assuming not. In Amsterdam? Probably not. Probably not. It's probably suitably. <laughs> there's, there's some yeah. moisture in the air. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know what What a crazy thing that helped me? Uh, I keep this in my kit. Hmm. I, got, I went to a sporting goods store, and I bought this, um, this stool. Is twelve dollars and it packs into a container like this big. No kidding. Sits on a carabiner. You pull it out and it just it opens up and folds out into a stool that can can hold me up, so it can hold most people. I mean, like, it uh, it, it was twenty dollars and it's just a little seat. I keep it with me because you never know where you're gonna need a seat or giving it to a tired actor or yeah. it just it's a nice thing. It makes you it makes it's a good way to. That's an interesting it's just, thing. It's a nice thing carrying a little chair everywhere. Yeah. You wouldn't believe how much that can make you somebody's best friend. Well, yeah, and I'll tell you, when you're walking three, four miles at NAB, and then you're just yeah. like, you're so tired of leaning over a booth talking yeah. to people, and you just want to sit for a minute. And then it's lunchtime, and you wait in a 32-minute line for a $12 hot dog, and then it doesn't even, it's cold, but you then you look, and there's no chairs, so you have to stand and eat it anyways. So yeah. it's like, yeah, that's, that's a perfect idea. Yeah, I mean, I've even used that just to, when I've been out in a mucky area, and I'm putting my bag down, I don't want to put it in the muck. Yeah. You know, so there's, there's a, so that's one thing, it, literally, $20, sporting goods store. I mean, I think they have them all over the place. You can just grab one. I think everybody in all departments should have one of those because it, it just fits on your belt. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Absolutely. I wish I had the model name on my offhand, but uh, we'll see if we there. can find an Amazon link and and put yeah. it in for everybody. You know, and another thing is when you're working on trade shows is having sustenance because, like I just said, having yeah. a twelve dollar hot dog gets really old when you've done it for sixteen years. So <laughs> it's uh, oh god. So you need to have like trail mix. You need to have trail mix is good. Um. Gosh, anything like uh, beef jerky is a really good thing to have. Just like different things that are like protein for sustenance that can help pick you up. Yeah. I have a horrible story. My second NAB, because like my first NAB, I was working with Coffee Sound. And then my second NAB, I worked for Zaxcom and I was a representative for them. Gosh, this was 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, Colleen, shout out to you. This is an embarrassing story. But after the first year of, like, the only thing that they had was, like, pizza, hot dogs, or, like, some, like, chicken bake thing from Quiznos. And it's just, I got so sick of those three things after the span of a week that I was like, next year, I've got this down. So I went to the store and I got a special type of protein bar called Detour Bars. I can't have another one of Detour. these bars to, to, in my life ever again. Because basically I was like, you know what? I'm just going to eat these and not have lunch. And then we'll just have food afterwards. So Colleen and I from Zaxcom, that's all we were eating were these protein bars. And after two days of eating these, we were just, we felt so sludgy and just horrible. It was don't eat protein bars. You need to eat real food. Um, even if you need to get away from the trade show and then come back, but make sure you're keeping yourself healthy. Um, mm -hmm. Eat the hot dog if you have to. Don't eat the detour bars. Yeah. Goddamn. Mm. Yeah, it was rough. It was rough. So, so what else can we talk about IBC? What else is new? What other well, products do you think you've heard about? I mean, you know, the, uh, it, you know, from our high level 
just discussions. There's the the thing about the you know the sound device is eight three three. Yeah. And then everyone's now trying to compare that to the Zaxcom Nova. And okay. you got the difference here of just looking at this. This this goes back to judging what you need. And, right. Um, there's a yeah. Uh, you know, somebody posted a really really good comparison on one of the forums. I think it was yesterday, or maybe it was today. It was it was really recently of just the differences between the Nova and the eight three three, and what what do you need? What do you not need? I think it was Max Flutterman. Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, and it, that's that's a. IBC is going to be a great place for people to go take a look. And, you know, it, it does have the, the curious situation of sound devices dropping this and then shipping it on Monday versus the Nova having been announced back at NAB. You know, that was back in, was that April? Yeah, yeah. the middle of April, so roughly. So there's been time to get feedback, time for everyone to think about whether they want that device, whether they want the H33, whether they want neither, or whether they want to be the slew of people buying up things that people sell in the wake yeah, of it. Like, exactly. Uh, you know, the 788s or 688s or, 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 or 6, 6833s that people are selling now because of the 833 or I guess mm -hmm. people are dumping Zaxcom Maxes like hotcakes because the Nova's like the same size. You know? Yeah. And um, it's uh, it's th there's going to be good opportunities to make those comparisons because that doesn't that hasn't happened where they've had two small compact competing recorders because, you know, this past yeah, NAB sound devices came out with the Scorpio and uh, I think it was the year before that um, the the um, what was it Zaxcom had the Diva 24 mm -hmm. so they're taking big cart mixers Diva 24 24 channels the Scorpio 32 channels right big cart things that have a very small user, user base. base when you compare it to most people because when you think right. about most jobs a boom in a couple wires. Mm -hmm. I mean, most things ever. I mean, you, when you really think about all the things that people are doing out there for audio, yeah. so smaller things are, uh, it's it's going to make a bigger splash these, you know? Yeah. And so this is where people are really going to take a look and f decide, do we want this next frontier? What does it give you? And there are indeed some amazing things. Like right. if you take the Nova, wait. I mean, people are going to be able to strip that thing down to where it's a feather and you're getting incredible functionality. Yeah. And then the 833 is more like taking like the miniature Scorpio and then putting that into a bag thing, but you could try and use it as a cart because it has support for third party MIDI controllers for fader boards. Right. And, you know, there are, there are great options. And I think a lot of times it'll come down to who are you more invested in already? Are you more of a sound devices user? Are you more of a Zaxcom user? Sure. It's hard to it's hard to switch. It's like it's a you know for everyone who might not know that's a bigger switch than going Apple Android and Android Apple. Yeah. Because I mean it's because you're really invested. Yeah, in all you this really stuff invest. So I mean, like expensive. It would yeah, it would be um, so hard to rebound and flip to the other side. Um, you know what? Actually, you bring up a really good question. W being that we're talking about IBC, how do you do the research at these types of trade shows to find the right tool for yourself? So, like, if somebody is thinking, I'm going to buy a Nova or an 833 now, and I'm going to IBC, when I go to both of these uh, booths, or when I talk to these uh, people, what are the types of questions that I need to ask so I can make the educated decision? Exactly. What's your recommendation? Well, um... Honestly, I'd say, you know, these things are going to go back to, in, you know, what are what are your minimum requirements for what you need to get done for the jobs that you're doing? What are the advanced requirements? And then what do you wish you had? And then balance that with yeah. balance that with how worth it is it to blow a bunch of money? And, you know, I say blow, blow is the wrong term to drop a bunch of money on invest something. invest that's a good word invest is a better <laughs> word um these minnesota terms might confuse my audience you know yeah. just kidding it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um you know it, it goes sort of goes back to what we were saying before are you at a stage where you are ready to invest based on some convenience yeah you know are because if you take the if you take uh the weight of the Nova with sure. its integrated wireless. Right. And you just basically need a battery and you're up there with, you know, a boom and four wires essentially, like a hardwire boom. And you got five channels going and it's it's really incredibly light. That's an investment in addition in your back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and that's a that's a big thing. So are you a 
do you do a lot of complicated bag work where you're wearing the bag all the time? Yeah. That's a good concern there. Um, you know, stripping things down because it's just everything's been so heavy for so long. Right. But we're so focused on getting the capability before that, that weight was less of a concern. And now we're at a point where weight can be more of a concern. If you're not doing that type of thing and you're looking more for uh, to, you know, split between, uh, you know, I mean, I get, you know, the the Nova can use the Oasis too, but I'm thinking about all the different MIDI controllers. If you look at right. the A through three, if you're looking at the onboard EQ that it has, that it, it now it has from Scorpio and the 688 had that too, but that's yeah, also that's a massive Yeah, that's a definite thing. difference. The that difference between proprietary exactly. and, you and know, open source. Yeah, and exactly. More and open source. Yeah, exactly. And when you think about, um, you know, new preamp designs, like are you, do you want that cleaner audio? Do you want... Are, do you like the sound device's feel? Do you? It, it's a little heavier. It's definitely gonna be a little heavier. Uh, but are you gonna? Are you gonna need to be wearing the bag all the time? Mm-hmm. And that's the question. I mean, for me, I. Gosh, I think I spend maybe a quarter of the time wearing the bag all day. Like on jobs where I just I'm constantly with the bag on me. So right. way too concerned for me. But it's not like my determining factor, particularly because, I'm, you know, I do a lot of. Uh, you know, a lot of shows, a lot of in, like uh, true crime stuff, a lot of interviews, a lot of, um, you know, things or, you know, some narrative work with a lot of stationary shots where I don't have to wear the bag. I just I wheel around my Olympia tools cart and nice. I just sit it on there. You know, it works smarter, not harder. Absolutely. But, you know, if you're in a run and gun ENG situation, you can't always take it off. And so there's there are those concerns. And that's another thing. A lot of people are running around with the sound devices, mix pre series, the mix pre twos that just came out and it's not like there's a whole lot else to see at IBC of those because they look basically the same yeah. and the differences are small but there's a sound devices option if you're lighter there's it, it's it, there are flavors and it, and it can come flavors. down to flavors you that's know? and that's what it is because yeah. like you said there's different strokes for different folks you know it's just there's there's a different tool for for different productions and for different people and, you know, we just need to respect that. In fact, that's that's one of the things that I want to talk about, because if there was one thing that really grinds my gears about the Internet and about just, you know, some people in general, it's it's the bashing, it's the trolling online. And one of the things that I would love to see in the future generation of sound mixers is, you know, just more respect. Instead of being like, oh, yeah, this thing's a piece of crap because it doesn't do Dante or it doesn't do this or it doesn't do that. Why don't we just applaud uh, people that are in our profession for building a masterpiece? Like, do you guys realize, like, how much work goes into creating a Nova or an 833 or a Sound Devices Mix Pre 2 or the first generation one or whatever? These things take years and, and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to develop. And then people will just go, oh, yeah, no, that's a piece of crap. And all it does is it just, like, pops the balloon on like a marvelous thing so like what we need to do is especially like around these events like instead of just bashing it let's just applaud them for creating a project regardless of if it works better for you or not let's just applaud them and and you know celebrate the new gear that is basically becoming part of the production sound family rather than just bash things all the time because it just seems like a bashing fest lately yeah you know trolls I like the movie, but that's it. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. Oh my, man, it's good. My my niece is all about it. You uh, got you got to get on the troll train. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know my thoughts. It goes back to what we were talking about, like a day in life running a website and, and vetting comments. Yeah, <sighs> there are people that just like to be negative. There's some people who believe what they're saying and they are just negative. And there's some people that I don't know. There's there's everything in between. Most of the people are silently reading. So trying to set a good example for being educational, trying and setting a good example for keeping things civil is really important. And there's some amazing people online and you know, there's, it's, it's You're such one a, of them. Thank you. There, I appreciate that. Uh, it's, it's become such a huge part of our lives being on these online forums. Yeah. It, it activity on there is a massive part of networking even, but mm -hmm. also learning and education or discussing the things you're not going to find in a manual the things you're not going to find in an FAQ section on a website, the things that you need real-world experience. Right. And some people are interested in sharing, some people aren't. You know, I prefer to think of it as it's it's raising the bar as a whole 
the more we all know, the stronger we all are. Right. Because the less we know, the more we can get taken advantage of. Yep. So when it comes to negative comments, in general, you just try and play it off positively. You try and give a, a positive response, a constructive response, um, you know, matter of factly, and just and just stick to helping the people who need help and the people who are legitimately asking questions that you know good you know good bad questions those are all relative but that's that's kind of essentially the outlook on it is that the people who aren't saying anything are the people who are watching and those are the people that could feel like they're stupid or feel like they're asking a ridiculous question and it might not be but yeah. maybe if all they've ever heard was negative feedback. Yeah, they ask a question and then they get bashed for it with with reason. We understand, like we were talking yeah, there, earlier. Yeah, there are a few things. Like there, if it's if it's incredibly basic, like somebody. You How know, do I use a sound device as mix pre two? Yeah, if it's step that one, general, read the manual. Exactly, you can't help someone who can't help themselves at all. But 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 we're talking about really complicated things and, right. and for the most part people are really great about it yeah and, and when you're talking some, about concepts and yeah. theories and things when you're mm -hmm. not asking the beginning bare bones that proves that you're a beginner like hi i've never done this type i took a job that i shouldn't have taken and i don't know how to do it can you tell me how to do it like that's literally like i've seen that multiple times recently haven't you mm -hmm. and it's I understand that there's a fake it till you make it type of concept, but man, you know, when you're playing the line that close to not understanding the profession, that's dangerous. You need to understand your, understand your trade as best of, as best you can. Mm -hmm. Oof. It's, you know, so, so once you're past that, the idea is that we're, you know, we just, we want to help. We want to be nice. You know, everybody scratches each other's back and you never know where someone's going to be able to help. And especially when you look at these forums, you know, th there's a lot of people who are not local to each other discussing things and it's helpful. I mean, you can, if you find out that these are really apt people, you know, you can recommend them. If they find out you're an apt person, they can recommend you. There's a networking aspect to it. There's an educational aspect to it. That's kind of why I really love Wave Report. I love the whole concept of it when I came on tutorials you know these reviews or guides are like a, an actual professional's perspective on it and less of a marketing thing like what it right. happened when somebody real used it and uh you know and there's a few places a few good sites that do that and i i love video mantis because video mantis is a it's like a a crazy amazing resource for just all the information you could want organized into a tight neat package about so many things and you keep adding new gear that people can look it up and that that your iphone app the you know where you can store you can make databases of your gear you can schedule out when you've rented it when you've loaned it what's out of commission when you bought it you can have your receipts in there you can have your serial yep. numbers taken on a picture stored in it these are great tools and i love that and it's it's really it's really fantastic. Thank you, man. I mean, yeah, we, we created it because, like I said, we have a, a common goal in life is to help to create greater awareness of, of sound production, sound, and the education because, you know what, L like you said, we've seen just too many people that are like, oh, man, I'm getting into the industry. I'm so excited. I got this job. And they, you know, they're doing a scene around a dinner table with six or eight people, and they're doing it for 150 all in, and they think that this is, but I'm in the movies, and it's just like, wow, if we could just educate to you a little bit more, then it's not just the excitement of hitting the red button, but it's also the theory and understanding uh, the business side of things and the money and, and what things cost. And there's just so much that goes into this wonderful industry, isn't there? Oh, so much. And you know? It's wonderful. It's a, it's a great beast yeah. doing, doing this type of thing. And it's exciting. And I, I like it. I wouldn't have it any other way i love you know i like working in spurts and then having time off i like i like the the fun of uh you know having sort of control over your schedule i mean ultimate control for sure <laughs> you know uh, but should you have, yeah should you not do it i mean <laughs> it, there's plus and minuses to every type of line sure. of work and it is scary to do this type of work yeah because it's not it's not the same old gainful like you know certain and so that's not for everyone yep and it definitely comes with its stresses but the hours change yeah. and so do the scenes yeah and you know that probably the best part is hmm. if you have a bad boss 
you don't ever have to work with them again. <laughs> Amen to that, yeah. brother. Ooh, we could go. That, that'd be a whole other Mantis <laughs> discussion. Really quickly, while we're on the topic, I want to give a shout out to one yeah. of our sponsors for this episode. There's a new company by the name of Coco Sound, and David Levine is watching. He's one of the owners. Uh, these are some new pots that go onto all of your mixers and recorders. So if you have Sound Device mixers, or if you have the new Nova, or you have the Max, these guys are glow-in-the-dark trim pots, so you can see them in the dark when you're working on the stage. Oh my gosh, why didn't somebody think of this earlier? This is incredible. They also have a little black light in there and the Allen wrench that you can use to screw these on. It's very easy. You just unscrew, pop one off, put this on, and tighten it back down. They're they're honestly they're very cheap and it's just one of those things that it's also a conversational piece. You know, people are gonna be like, dude, look at it. Your 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 bag is glowing in the dark now. So you become the coolest sound mixer on the block. Take a look at our sponsors for this mantis discussion. This is Coco Sound. These are called glow pots. I want some. Yeah, I right. really do want some. These yeah. are these are mixed pre ones. Yeah, so mm -hmm. these are new. Yeah, I, these are the ones. For, yeah, well, actually, these are for the Zaxcom Max and the Nomad, but he has them for are? the mixed pre as well. They they look small, but yeah, he's making a specific one for the mixed pre as well. That's why if you the... if we looked at my mixed pre right now, it's naked. It's got oh. one knob off because he stole one from me. But that's okay. The Max and the you guys got to check out. I think it's CocoSound.com. Yeah. If not, check them out on Facebook, you know. Yeah. Um, and in fact, David, I don't know if you're doing anything, but if you want to get over here and get one for Jared before he goes on the plane, that would be awesome. So hurry up. <laughs> get over here. All right. I'm plugging you. Gosh. So anyways, uh, yeah. So what else is new, Jared? Talk to me, man. Talk to Why'd you go to K-Tech? Oh, well, you know, I was in town, and I've always wanted to make the pilgrimage because uh, Brenda and Tina are just such amazing people. Heck, yeah, I they am, are. I am a K-Tech devotee. I mean, I love everything. I mean, seriously. And so I want to check out the I have K-Tech underwear on right now. I'm not going to show you, but you're, that's you're how not. much of a fan I am. Well, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to need proof. Okay, uh, later, <laughs> later, okay? Yeah, it's, I, I have to put a different tag on this, <laughs> you know? But yeah, so so you went there and you were talking to them about the new the classic, classic pro. pro, their new boom pole. The new boom pole, and you know, and I'm gonna be doing. Um, I I took some videos and I'm gonna write something about this for Wave Report pretty soon. Uh, you know, when I'm not constantly running around in circles. Um, this guy right here, by the way. Yeah, you know, yeah. this is this is sort of like a, it looks like it's a prototype. This is like a sort prototype. Of. It's hybrid like a one. middle one. So the pole mm -hmm. itself isn't uh, isn't the classic pro, but it has the. Um, the you know the twist sections of the classic pro and it has the internal cable of the classic classic pro and it's um it I looks like we a, took off the little piece yeah it's right here it's right You've here got so it? it's oh, a non, I can't see it's it. a non anodized you know sort of uh, pre production unit it looks like but you know uh, I was saying to them and they know this is that we're trying to whoop innovate a pole mm -hmm. is kind of crazy it's it's how are you gonna do that well yeah it's hard. They and as a lot of people have heard, they came out with the with a way to cable or uncable a boom pole quickly without soldering, and as that's particularly relevant in this current climate because so many people are interested in head mounting small transmitters for their booms right. that can phantom power, like the ZMTs or there's the A10s or even people will stick plug-ons like yeah, a even an SSM HM. with a little battery powered phantom power device yeah, or yeah. something. Yeah, people people stick the the TRX, the whatever the, yeah. the big TRX seven hundred or mm -hmm. the the Electro yep. HMs or you know stuff like that. So you know, and it, that's a little heavy, but people love to do it. You yep. know, and then you don't have the cable in there, and you don't hear any rattling. Yeah, that's the inside. whole thing. If you've got that up here, and you have a cable that's inside the boom pole, it's still going to be slapping back and forth. Yeah. Get rid of it. So it was incredibly easy to cable or uncable. I'm gonna have a video about that and. Uh, and also the the internal cable that's inside the the new connector yeah is this brilliant. is this is it's, awesome it's so cool yep. so it comes like this it's usually black and it's engraved it's yeah mine remember anodized. everyone mine's a prototype it, yeah it's okay. a prototype model so um but it's really low profile and it this is where we go to those incredibly amazingly small attention to detail yep. that I love with K Tech if you go inside there's this strain relief. The cable goes through this sort of windy road, and I don't know if the cameras can see it. You know it. what I can do is I'm going to take a here? camera right here. Okay. We'll just call this Mantis Cam if you want to flip to it. Can we see it? Yeah, mm -hmm. see. You're going to have a delay, so okay, just ignore that. Okay, I'm going to have a delay that. on my on Yeah, my so feed. you I'm just watching. have to basically just be in real time here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it, hopefully this is in focus, but mm -hmm. um, if you look at this, 
this has incredible strain relief. Yeah, I the mean, way it zigzags. It's yeah. like that San Francisco road by Full House. Mm-hmm. Whatever. <laughs> Never mind. And, you know, they could they could try and just crimp the cable at the end and have it straight and to, you know, to keep it tight in there. But, no, they came up with a better. It's simple. Yeah, a lot it of people just sense. do a zip tie in there. Yeah, a zip you know? tie. And, and this is like a standard Nutrix cable, but you could take this off and rotate the Nutrix so it's in a different position. That's awesome. But it's awesome. small, low profile. It's it's one of a bunch of little things about the K-Tech just designs that I, I I love because you won't even think about it. And I was I was just talking to Tino yesterday and and Brenda and we were just saying if you do your job well, everybody says good job. If you yeah. do your job really well, nobody knows what you did. Yeah. Because it just works. It's just so seamless. Sh- there's there's nothing for anybody to say, oh that works well. They just don't even realize what went into it. Yeah. They so can't complain. The, the it's better just, you are, the more is. thankless it ends up getting because yeah. you just you can't possibly know all the little things. So I mean this is just one of many things. So I, I love this internal cable and you know, you could even use it for anything else, but it's really, really nice and it's got I mean, this is again, this is a prototype cable so this isn't the can you talk about the knuckles a little bit oh, since so you're the, since you know, you're like knuckles, hot on their uh y- yeah knowledge exactly. train. so these um they're very similar to the old classics but this here it, it's smoother it's softer i know that i i love my the little classic circles but i've noticed that after you know when i have had that pole my pole seven years it's collected a lot of my skin in there yeah these are smoother and I kind of like it better. And the anodization is... Um, They're really smooth. Uh, it's very smooth. It's shinier. It's uh, But it's really, really nice. And with the classic poles, uh, they've got it so that a quarter turn will lock it solidly. Yeah. And so, you know, I, for me, I'm not a big stickler for how much I have to rotate unless it's forever. But some people are really, really nuts. Like, this has to lock, like, done. Yeah. And then moves, f- you know, really smoothly. I'm. I mean, I, I'm impressed. It was. It was really great, and it's. Um, it's thicker than this. Uh, this yeah. is. This is your standard classic thickness. Yeah, exactly. These are yeah. the standard thickness for the regular classic poles, and yeah. then they were basically trying a couple modified pieces before mm-hmm. they. You know, they didn't have the finished one yet for me. Yeah. So, Tino, so. get on that. All right. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. So I know they're busy right now because they're working on, um, setting up for the. Uh, the boom right master classes that are going to be happening in Europe as yeah, well. Yeah, Tino's going on I'll quite the European tour with that. And I think uh, Chris Howland's going to be there. There's going to be some, uh, was it Ken Strain? Yeah, think, and um, Kevin Surchai is going to be there as well. Don. Blas, um, shout out yeah. to you. Guys, I just took, uh, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting for a second. I just took Blas Kisich's uh, negotiation, contract negotiation seminar with the union. Mm-hmm. I want to take it again. I didn't realize how much I don't know about negotiating. He is he is literally a god amongst men when it comes to learning how to take that initial phone call before you even get the job. It doesn't matter about hitting the button. you got to get the job to hit the button. And wow, did he teach so much. So shout out. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting you to be a mentor here soon yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, Blas is definitely someone he can tell when he, when he writes he knows he knows a lot about what he's talking about, so mm-hmm. I I believe that. Yeah, I def- Yeah, we all hold him to a higher standard, and <laughs> he 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 holds it. He holds that line. So, shout out to you, Blas. Uh, but please continue. Um, what what's going on? What else can we talk about here? Hmm. Well, let's talk a little bit more about Minnesota and the differences between sound work in L.A. versus other states. Well. I'll, I'll, we were talking about this before this started. I'll, I'll, when people ask me what type of work do you do, the answer is always the same. It's whatever needs sound. Mm. You know, when you're not in the largest market, there's still, I mean, one of the few things that America produces a lot of is media. So yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on. But when you're not in the m- biggest markets, you can't really, I mean, it's unlikely. You're probably not going to stick to a single niche. You're going to do whatever. So I will do... I do a lot of true crime stuff, but there's docs, there's news, there's indie narrative, there's um, there's uh, shows, TV shows, there's uh, live events a lot of times, live recording. But they usually I don't get hired just to, to do a live event that's not being recorded, like a big stadium. It's like um, pop-up events where they want to set up some speakers and... Um, and record at the same time, do a really good recording while also feeding room speakers, and that's where I'm, um, that's where I'm interested in this uh, the 833 because of the onboard EQ. Yeah. So that's going to be something just to cut the the highs and the lows. Yeah. Fun fact, everyone, get rid of your feedback from live events. Cut the highs and the lows. The f- live people will know that. Yep. It's, you know, not a rubber stamp, obviously, but 
cut the highs and the lows and you can stop your feedback. Yeah, shape that waveform a little bit. Get rid of the stuff that you don't need that's troublesome, that's mm -hmm. problematic. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, uh, there's a lot of stuff like that. And whereas when I was still living in L.A., most of what I did was narrative. So um, I'll say I the hours are better in corporate. Yeah, that's <laughs> for sure. Because a lot of these people, they, they're they're offended at the concept they stay at work longer than eight hours. And so, yippee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, That's so fine we, with we us. Get, you know, it ends up being like six hour days on these corporate things and they pay, you know, the full rate versus, you know, narrative stuff ends up being a lot more of, uh, you know, I, I try and do narrative as regularly as I can to keep up the skill set because it's a lot more complicated. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it ends up being a mix there. Um, it's uh, the summer's always insane absolutely crazy because the winter there's a select few things you can do outside yeah for shooting unless you're trying to do a nice thing yeah uh, unless if you're so shooting a fargo sequel they, you know i mean <laughs> you know that people do their their snow things i mean and just being ready i mean you'll, you'll do move short films about people ice fishing and you're out on the ice you yeah. know inside of a tent and that's that's pretty fun mm -hmm. um so i, I mean th it's really whatever it is and and there there's enough to do it's just about networking and getting in good with the you know just so do you feel <laughs> yeah no worries so do you feel that like as a student that's just getting into this uh do you feel that you have to go to la do you feel that like that should be the first venturing point for people or or new york because New York is a huge union town. Huge. It's probably not a great place to start. It is in a huge New York, one. and they're and you know from what I understand they're very very strict about very strict about following. I mean, if you want to go career in New York and you want to just start as a utility and you want to go in, they'll you know you can apprentice utility and then you can work your way up that way. It depends right. what your long haul your long haul goals are. But if your if your goals are to go somewhere and then come back, you know go somewhere for the experience, then maybe New York sort of like your mileage may vary yeah um and then i guess atlanta there everyone seems to be putting up big signs that say we're full yeah <laughs> uh, it's kind of like the gold rush yeah exactly. uh, with all the shooting there but yeah you know, it's who been, knows it's how been that's a gonna... busy progression for them for the past yeah. 10 years they're not going away uh, new mexico is going to blow up soon right oh so yeah arizona new mexico there's a bunch of shows going down there because they just pass some incentives we are everyone in minnesota is desperately trying to get our legislature to reinstate the greater incentive programs because it's just insane how people don't get how the more you shoot in a state the more money goes into the state every time you've got caterers you've got hotels you've got yep. other businesses yep. that get money poured into them you just bring people want to come yeah. to the places where movies were shot exactly it is insane yep. how they don't i mean they don't see it that way and yeah. it's uh you know so everybody's constantly lobbying for that so i'd say you have to go to la um I want to say no, but I also learned a lot in L.A. <laughs> because you're I, totally saturated. You're immersed in it. There's yeah, so many of us here. Uh, you know, I'll say even if you're not an L.A. person, it's nice to spend some time outside your comfort zone. Totally. I know a lot of people. Uh, I know some people that have specifically gone to L.A. with the intention of coming back or uh, that have gone to L.A. and have already come back um, or people that have flat out just come from L.A. This place isn't for everyone, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't want to live here full time because I love the seasons. Yeah, I love, you know, I love a, a fall is the greatest Fall's time the of best. my life. I That's all fall. I want. It, it's just I'm so excited we're coming into it. Uh, my wife and I are going to set up a our little Halloween village. Oh, right nice! Get back with some fun things from Department Fifty Six. They make little little creatures, so you care of a little town of like little little. Cr um, you know, small houses and people and stuff like that. So it's just fun. That's and festive. Awesome. So I, I love that there. And I love a lot of things about living there, you know? And so it, there are things to get here. So I, I, there's definitely a value if people can make it work. It's not a hundred percent essential. Like nothing is no one's story is the same, but it, you know what? It, I think it all comes down to whether you're buying the same piece of gear. What do you need to get? Yeah. Do you feel that you can achieve what you need? And, and, Ultimately, no one's going to be able to answer that question for you, but you can get guidance. You can mm -hmm. hear other people's stories. And the best way to do it is how do other people do it? How do other people not do it? I mean, even if you can find somebody who isn't upset, who wasn't able to do it, they can explain their story and why they couldn't. That's probably valuable, too. Yeah. Because you can find out what what went right, what went wrong, 
with everything. You know, it's a it's a dance, and it's you're constantly on the alert. the The worst part about this is that you're you're constantly just in fear you're gonna miss a call. Yeah. And then you miss the call, and then they call the next person immediately, and then you've missed it because you were. I don't know, taking a nap. Yeah, So exactly. it's like, or you were, I don't know, you were out of cell service or you just decided I'm going to unplug. And, you know, it depends. If you're really, really, really great in your career and you don't care, you know, you're going to get another million calls, that's fine. But if you, uh, so wherever you can do to network, yes. whatever you can do to build your client base, to build, but particularly to, to build your colleague base, to have people know you, have you know them, how you can work with them, how you can help educate each other, because everybody's got something to learn from everyone. Right. Make it about community and things will things will build. That's why I think I say we're technically competitors, but we're all in it together in the long haul. Absolutely. And yeah. Yeah. It's not as cut wrote cutthroat as most people think yeah you know it's it is definitely a community and the more that we stick together and help each other the the better off we're all going to be instead of of thinking it the opposite way for sure exactly i mean it's it's not you know we're not thinking like you know it, laissez-faire capitalism where everybody's just survival of the total fittest i mean it, it is technically but you know i think everyone has a lot of benefit by scratching each other's backs i'll say absolutely man jared thank you so much for showing up for this mantis absolutely. discussion it's i appreciate you being here thank you and everyone thank you so much for watching i want to remind you guys that we have the audio for vr workshop and i actually have a special announcement i got a a notification from ben we're going to give away one free ticket to this event this is a 200 dollars value and if you want to find out you just have to basically subscribe to Video Mantis on Facebook and share this post. And that basically puts you in the running for a free ticket that we're going to announce next week, Wednesday. So we're going to be putting more and more information on our page. But all you need to do is basically share this post along with the event. We have to make sure the event's in there so people can get to the link. But that will basically get you in when you subscribe to us on Facebook and share the event you will have a ticket that will get you into the raffle drawing on Wednesday for the event. It's a two-day event that's happening on September 21st and 22nd, and we'll give you more information on that soon. Thank you so much to our sponsor, Coco Sound Glow Pots, and thank you to Jared for joining us. Thanks Be so sure much. to check him out online as well as at WaveReport.com, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everyone. Hello everyone, this is Thomas Pop from Video Mantis and I'm joined with my good friend Ken Strain who has created a course that's geared towards boom operators in the beginning to intermediate level. It's called Boom Right Masterclass. Ken, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Well, I've uh, been booming since 1993 and I started out doing non-union features uh, and then progress into television. So most of my career has been working in very fast-paced television environments. And then I sprinkled it in with some features every now and then, when I can. When I can. They're a nice little, like, break from television. But television is really where you, you know, learn the hard knocks and, and, and you really have to dial in your skills and understanding because there's no time. And there is multiple cameras and you're moving very quickly and everything has to sound good the first time. They don't have a big budget to like replace all the dialogue. So if it's not working on, you know, they, they will get rid of you, you know, the, no problem. So it's a, it is a very like pressure environment to be working, especially on a big TV show like House or Lost that, you know, has very challenging environments, you know, big counts of cast. And, you know, the, the, the expectation is to perform, you know. 
So you really, these are the places where your skill, your experience, your understanding really comes into play. And you will learn things on these kinds of shows too, you know? And features have their own challenges that are interesting, but you know, you have more time to deal with them, which is kind of nice, you know? You know, Ken, one of the things that uh, made me start Video Mantis in the past was the fact that there's a lack of sound knowledge out there that really just drives truth into what we do. And those skills are something that aren't taught in a lot of these groups online and, and places where people are getting their information. Right. And film schools don't really teach it either because no, no one wants to do sound. That's the, everyone wants to direct. Exactly. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of cut my, I'm kind of bringing sort of a niche of the boom operator, which is where the sound starts. We're the guys right on set, men, women, right on set, picking up the sound. This is, this is the place where mistakes are first felt all the way down the chain. So it's good to dial this part of it in and make this part solid and easy to do, you know? So I agree. So what makes a successful boom operator? On one hand, one can say that being a boom operator is about holding a microphone over, a, over an actor's head. Right. That is the most basic definition of being a boom operator. But what we really strive to be is sound people who are, are, are bringing like more than just a mic over an actor's head, but balancing dialogue and, and dealing with weird acoustics. And, you know, we work in less than ideal conditions. All the time. That's, that's where, where our listening and our experience comes into play because less than ideal conditions, which are basically all the time, make the job the fun and challenge that it is, you know? Exactly. So, you know, I would say a successful boom operator uh, is one who can uh, do the job with relative ease, is um, interfaces well with the crew, is friendly to work with, and handles situations and problems with calmness. Um, you get those, those elements together and you will have success. People will call you. And you'll know you're successful when you're turning down jobs because you're, you have too many jobs. And you're like, oh, I can't do that job, I can't do that job. And you know, okay, I've, I've achieved some success here, you know? So Ken, why don't you break down this course a little more and tell people what they're gonna be getting into? The way I've broken the course down is we start with the equipment. So I cover that for about an hour of just how to set everything up. And that way you have the most success uh, the importance of the equipment is, is, is key to how I work. And then the next part is physically being a boom operator. How to hold the pole, move the pole, adjust for different things. Um, actors, blocking, all the different situations we find. I show you how to get through it in a very efficient, easy way. And then the next part is how we function on set. And I even throw in a few wiring tricks, my old wiring tricks that I've used for years that I've had a lot of success with. So, but the primary part of the third part is how to work with the crew and how to get what you need from the crew, from everyone around you and the actors, everything. Just how to, how to work with everybody. Ken, I've been doing this for 15 years and I still learned things from this course. Who is this course for? This course is basically for anyone who holds a boom pole and even if they've just started, like uh, doing like student films, you know, new. You can be brand new, but you've tried this. You've held a boom pole and you've decided you're gonna try this, maybe do a short film, uh, all the way to 10 years. So from student film beginning to 10 years experience, that's for you because I'm still, you're, you're gonna learn so much in those first 10 years, and I can, I can bring that learning curve right back down to your first year. Everyone, this course is a game changer. If you're a boom operator, not taking this course versus taking this course is literally gonna catapult you into the future. You're going to eliminate years of confusion and, and troublesome times and sore shoulders when you could just be learning how to boom right. This is Thomas Pop from Video Mantis. I'm here with Ken Strain. We'll see you on the inside.
Welcome to the basics of soldering and cable making in the field. This is an absolute necessity for any sound utility on a production, as well as any person who would like to understand just what exactly is going on inside of these cables that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. This course is designed to teach you everything you need to know to make your very own cables. We will touch on what equipment to purchase, how to stay safe while operating the equipment, how to assess damages in the field, and even demonstrate techniques and examples of how to make your very own cables. We are going to take you deep into the world of cable building and repair and show you what you need to buy, how to maintain your equipment, and how to be safe on set. This is Soldering 101 at Video Mantis. Purchasing this course will unlock all videos and place it in your van line.